Okay, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to uh, work with fractions. We're just going to do the top couple of examples here. Um, let me zoom in maybe a little bit here so you can see it. All right, hold on, almost there, and there we go. Okay, so in this first example, I just want to show you a couple of different methods here um, for solving this problem. The easiest method, I think, in this case like this is just to add the two x's together. And if you've got a good calculator, if you've got any calculator really, we can do something like this where we just do one fourth plus two-fifths, and that tells us that we have 13 twentieths of an x. So I have 13 twentieths of an x, and that is equal to 39. Now I can go through, and to get rid of the 13 twentieths, I just need to multiply both sides by the same amount. And the amount that I'm going to multiply it by is just the reciprocal. That is 20 over 13. Flip that fraction. But i got to do it to both sides, 20 over 13 over here as well. And the reason that I chose that value the fraction in front of the x, I took it and flipped it, is because now the 20 on top and the 20 on bottom go away. The 13 on top and the 13 on bottom go away. So I'm left with just an x. x equals what value? And so I'm going to take the 39. I'm going to multiply it by 20 thirteenths, which is the same thing as saying times 20 and divided by 13, and I get a total of 60 for x. That's one way to do the problem. Okay. But if you don't like working with fractions, then in the second example, I'm going to work it a different way. Rather than just combine the x's and the non-x's and try to approach it like the first one, I'm going to show you a completely different method. I'm going to take a look at the numbers on the bottom of the fraction. Those are all my denominators, right? 2, 3, and 6. And I'm going to say, okay, what value do they all go into? And they all go into the number 6. So if I multiply every single number, every single term, and there's four of them here, right? If I multiply every one of these four things by the number 6, then I'm going to get rid of the fractions. And remember, I chose that because it's the smallest value, the lowest common denominator. That's that value that all three of these go into, 3, 6, and 2. Because if I do that, if I take 6 times 2 thirds, that's the same thing as 6 times 2, which is 12, divided by 3, which is 4, I really have 4 x's. Over here, if I took 6 times 5, that's 30, divided by 6, well, I'm back to 5. It's like the 6 on top and the 6 on bottom went away, right? So I got 4x plus 5 equals 6 times x, well that's easy enough, minus, and then half of 6, which is 3, 6 divided by 2 if you want to look at it that way. And now I've got something with no fractions, and so I always like this method. We could have done the same thing over here on the first problem if I would have multiplied everything by 20. Why 20? Because 4 and 5 both go into 20, right? So we could have done that as a first step, 20 times this, 20 times this, 20 times this, and then I would have been working with something with no fractions. So now it's just a matter of solving the simple algebra 1 problem. Okay, I'm going to take the 4x and subtract it from both sides. So I get 5 is equal to 2x minus 3. I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and so I end up with 2x is equal to 8, which means that x is equal to 4. Just a couple of quick methods here that you could have used to work with fractions. And I will need you to keep those both in mind because we're going to do some problems with fractions here in just a minute. 